Hello, this is the introductory lecture for lab assignment number seven. Related educational materials are in the lectures 17 through 20 and in the written material sections 2.4 through 2.4.5. The overall goals of this lab assignment are to examine the behavior of first order electrical circuits. In the first part of the lab assignment, we will look at a passive first order circuit. It will in fact be an RC circuit consisting of a series combination of a single resistor and a capacitor. What we will do is take a look at the voltage difference across the capacitor. We'll also look at the voltage difference across the resistor. And we will notice that those two waveforms have to be sum up to be the same as the input voltage, which is applied to the overall RC network. Later in this first part, we will take a look at loading the circuit itself. Most electrical circuits exist in order to do some useful function. That useful function is generally done by applying a load to the circuit. Passive circuits, when you load them, tend to respond to the load. Applying the load changes the behavior of the circuit. We'll take a look at that in the last portion of part one of this assignment. That will take us into the second part of this assignment, which is to do an active first order circuit. The active first order circuit that we will implement is essentially the same input output differential equation as the passive circuit of part one. So we'll take a look at the response of that circuit, compare it to our previous passive circuit, see that they are approximately the same. In the final part of part two, we will load the active circuit we'll see that since the power is applied to the load by the external power supplies of the operational amplifier, the active circuit is not affected as much by the load as the passive circuit was. That's one of the primary reasons for having active circuits in the first place. An intermediate step in part two is to change the input frequency that's applied to the circuit and take a look at the response of the circuit as the rate of the input changes. In part one of lab seven, we'll take a look at the RC circuit shown schematically on this slide. We'll be looking at the step response of this circuit. Now we're gonna create our step response by putting in a square wave input to the circuit. We'll just make sure that the frequency of the square wave is low enough so that it looks like a step function to the circuit. Now we have two potential voltage differences across this circuit, V sub R of T, the voltage across the resistor, and V sub C of T, the voltage across the capacitor. Now we've taken a look analytically at what V sub C of T should be for this circuit. We're gonna experimentally measure that voltage. We're also going to measure the voltage across the resistor, V sub R of T. Now what I want you to notice from this part of this lab assignment is that V sub R of T plus V sub C of T has to be equal to the input voltage applied to the overall circuit. We can't lose any energy magically in this circuit. So we'll take a look at those two waveforms. Notice that V sub C of T plus V sub R of T sum up to be something like V in of T, and that will give us some more practice in working with oscilloscopes and how to make transient measurements. Now let's look at the implementation of the circuit and measure the voltage responses across the resistor and capacitor. This is our RC circuit. It consists of a resistor and a capacitor in series. I'm using channel one of the arbitrary waveform generator to apply a square wave to this terminal of the resistor. I have grounded this terminal of the capacitor. I'm using channel one of my oscilloscope to measure the input. So channel one of the arbitrary waveform generator is connected directly to channel one of the oscilloscope. And I'm using channel two of the oscilloscope to measure the voltage across the capacitor. So I'm measuring at this terminal here to channel two of the scope. Now let's provide power to the circuit and measure the response. Okay, in the arbitrary waveform generator, I have set up a 100 hertz signal. It has an amplitude of five volts and an offset of three volts. If I run that, I will get a square wave applied to this signal. Let's measure that on the oscilloscope. And our response looks something like this. Channel one, the orange line is our input square wave. Channel two is the voltage across the capacitor. From this waveform, knowing that the square wave is applied at this time, we can measure a time constant and a DC gain. 
Now we've measured the voltage across the capacitor. We also want to measure the voltage across the resistor. Most oscilloscopes will measure voltages relative to ground, so what I'm going to do is actually rewire this circuit slightly. It's still going to be a series RC combination, but I'm going to swap the resistor and the capacitor. That will allow me to measure the voltage across the resistor relative to ground. So I'm just going to unplug the capacitor, move the resistor to where the capacitor was, and move the capacitor to where the resistor was. Now if we look at our oscilloscope, we're now measuring the voltage across the resistor using the blue line. The orange line is still our input voltage. You'll see, if you compare this waveform with the previous waveform, that if we sum up those two, we will get something very similar to the input square wave. We're not magically losing energy anywhere. In the time it takes for the capacitor to respond, the resistor is responding then. We'll also look at the effects of loading this RC circuit. So we'll apply a load, R sub L, across the capacitor, and then we'll measure the voltage across the load. Now, that application of the load is going to change the response of the circuit. So if we've designed a passive RC circuit in order to give us some time constant and some DC gain, and then we potentially connect up that RC circuit to some other stage of an overall system, we can end up changing the response of our original RC circuit. Because the capacitor is seeing an overall different equivalent resistance, which is going to change the time constant, also, the addition of that load resistor is going to cause the DC gain of the circuit to change. If you open circuit the capacitor, this V out is going to look like a voltage divider rather than a voltage across an open circuit, as it did for the unloaded circuit. So I've rewired my circuit so that I'm measuring the voltage across the capacitor. We've gotten the same waveform that we got previously with this circuit. Now I'm going to apply my load resistor across the capacitor. So I apply one terminal of this resistor to the higher voltage node of the capacitor. Plugging in the other terminal causes this waveform to change rather significantly. Okay. The DC gain goes down, the time constant also changes. Unplugging it goes back to its previous form. In part two of this lab assignment, we will look at an active first order circuit as shown on this slide. The input output differential equation for this circuit is virtually identical to the input output relationship for our previous passive circuit. The only difference is that this circuit will invert the input voltage. So there is a sign change. If I put a positive voltage into this, the output voltage will go negative. Other than that, the time constant is the same and the DC gain is the same. Now, this should have roughly the same step response as our previous circuit, with the exception of the sign change. The first portion of this part of the lab assignment is to verify that. Subsequent to our previous discussion of this circuit, we'll now look at an implementation of the circuit and look at the measured response voltages. This is our active first order electrical circuit. This is the operational amplifier that is our active element. We're still applying a square wave to the circuit with channel 1 of our arbitrary waveform generator. That's connected to the inverting input voltage node of the operational amplifier through this 470 ohm resistor. We've grounded the non-inverting input terminal. We have a 470 ohm resistor plus a 1 microfarad capacitor, which are in the feedback loop from the output terminal to the inverting input terminal. Power is applied to the operational amplifier with VP plus and VP minus, which go respectively to the positive external power supply and the negative external power supply. We're measuring our output voltage on channel 2 of the oscilloscope. We're measuring our input voltage on channel 1 of the oscilloscope. We're using the arbitrary waveform generator to apply a 100 hertz square wave